one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Oh yeah, feel the burn. Hey buddy, what's up? Hey, what's going on? What are you uh what are you up to? I'm training. Yeah. What well, huh? I'm getting ready to play 24 hours of video games. I don't want to cramp up halfway through. Okay. What are you doing down here? At the point? Yeah. Isn't this where everyone trains? Good point. Oh yeah, feel it. Donate now at ChachiPlays.com. It's for the kids. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! Yeah! Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to you. have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Sing, sing, sing. Hey guys, it's another Indie Mayhem show. Back at you again, talking some indie wrestling. I am Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, of course, myself uh, in the video profession, uh, helping out with some indie wrestling here in the Pittsburgh area in, with the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, our uh, RWA Renegade Wrestling Alliance, stuff like that, and other fun projects here with Sorgatron Media. And of course, my usual compatriot on these shows, Eamon down in, whoop, well, that's the wrong title, Eamon hey. down in San Antonio, <laughs> Texas. He's the announcer down at Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, ready to talk compatriot. about some indie like wrestling. That word, What's that? I like that word, Sorg, compatriot. It's compatriot? I'll try to mix it up a little bit. Tell me that more often. How you doing this week, sir? I am doing great, sir. I am ready to talk some indie wrestling as always. We do on Tuesday good, nights. Good, good, good. I know you you talk some indie. <laughs> I know you talk some commentating uh, uh, thoughts on the I wrestling. I talk about the indie earlier. wrestling that's happening in front of me. Yes, right. right. Exactly. As a but. It's a different kind of talking. So. Exactly. And, of course, uh, thanks a lot to our friend Basic Sickness for the introduction you guys just heard on the podcast. Uh, check out his stuff for free over at basicsickness.com, friend of ours here in the Pittsburgh area. And also check out more stuff, this show and others. We get all kinds of stuff at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can also drop us a line at uh, goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com and that phone number at 412-206-WMS0. At Mayhem Show on Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Facebook, Google Plus, and the great Facebook group. You can find us. Um, and you can also uh, find us on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, YouTube, all kinds of places in video and audio formats, however you want to consume us. And uh, join us here live every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central Time for Eamon. Uh, Live.sorgatronmedia.com or you can just go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com. we got a link up there every week for you. And just a quick reminder, uh, please check out our friend at Chuck ChachiPlays.com. Get your donations. It's happening this weekend, uh, the 9th and the 10th, at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern to uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Saturday. Uh, we'll be going 24 hours streaming on this very channel at live.circuitronmedia.com. Get your donations in. Great, great causes with Toonzeum and Dreams of Hope helping out uh, youth art and LGBT kids uh, in the community locally. Uh, so please, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a, a blast uh, uh, seeing the crew down there and uh, uh, here locally in Pittsburgh, and you guys can check out from all over the world. So let's get right with it. I know you got a guest from your neck of the woods again this week, right, Eamon? I do. It's my. It was my turn to bring a guest, and, and I wanted to, I think with this show, we wanted to span the gamut when it comes to independent wrestling. We've had wrestlers that have you know been doing this for years. We've had announcers. We've had promoters. Uh, and I wanted to switch it up, and this, our first sort of, I guess, uh, in training professional wrestler, uh, she's had a couple matches uh, in her, and she's here to talk about some sort of her training and her aspirations of becoming a professional wrestler. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Delilah Doom. Delilah, how are you? Hi! Pleasure to have you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. Um, I guess the first question we always ask uh, all of our guests, really, because it's sort of a common question when it comes to uh, uh, wrestling. Uh, what What was your first ever uh, memory of professional wrestling? Oh God. Uh, well, when I was ten, 
uh, I think I was in fourth grade, uh, a bunch of my guy friends, when they were like, hey, do you want to maybe hang out and watch some wrestling? I was like, what? Wrestling? <laughs> but I wanted to be cool. So I was like, okay. And so I think it was a, a Monday Night Raw. I just remember seeing China, and I was hooked. <laughs> I just fell in love with, uh, I mean, it's kind of funny looking back on that now, but she was so badass to me, and I was just like, holy crap, I love wrestling. And it became a thing, me and my guy friends, guy friends, I'm in like fourth grade, we'd get together and watch, <laughs> we'd watch Raw every night, and uh, my parents used to have a black box, so I'd always have them over for all the pay-per-views. <laughs> And it just kind of started from there. I just, from there on out, I was like, I really want to, I want to do that. <laughs> That's my dream. Awesome. Very cool. And and other than, like you mentioned China and that, were there any other sort of wrestlers from when you were watching that sort of, you know, caught your attention and caught your eye? I was a huge Lita fan. Uh, her high flying moves are really awesome. I'm a huge Chris Jericho fan. Uh uh, I hate to say it, but I really liked the Hardy Boys. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 had their, they had their following. Hey, you know, I was I was younger back then, but yeah, like those are people I looked up to growing up. Uh, and was also I was a huge rock fan. I had a huge cutout of the rock in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Um, so now, we, we uh, as I mentioned before, you are in the training process, and, and you're also a few matches in of becoming a professional wrestler. Um, I guess the the basic question I can ask is, what sort of inspired you to, you know, think of like, hey, I should become a pro wrestler? What sort of the one thing that, you know, made you decide that? Uh, I just the whole fact it was the athleticism and. And entertainment and theater combined. It's I've always done sports like so, uh, middle school and high school and college. And I've always been a theater kid, so that kind of drew me to it. I love being in front of a crowd, uh, so it was like a mix of that. And I mean, I'm 20. I'll be 26 this month. It's 16 years since I've said I want to be a wrestler, and it's finally happening. So I just feel like it's it's meant to be. If that's lame, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, so, so you so you've had that you have that you've had that goal for a good while. Yeah, six, sixteen years. I've I've always told people I want to be a wrestler, and you know I put it on the back burner for a long time. It was it's kind of a it became a pipe dream because people used to laugh at me. People would be like, yeah, oh, okay, all right, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it just kind of I moved to Texas and it fell at my feet, and I was like, holy crap, it's gonna finally happen. So, awesome. Yeah, yeah and. And I know you were, I mean, you've been training under uh, multiple people. One of the more, I think, notable ones that I know that you train under is uh, Paul London, former WWE superstar. Yes. Uh, so, so how did you find out about Paul's school, and, and, and what has it been like sort of training under him? Uh, well, I originally started at AAPW with George De La Isla, and I trained there, I think, about three or four months. And then Paul came in, and I uh, started, you know, every once in a while, he would take over a class, lead our classes. And, you know, he had talks about opening up his own school. And so when uh, he started up in January, and my work schedule switched, so it fit my work schedule to start training at Paul's school. And so I made that switch over there. Um, and, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul is really focuses on, uh, uh, like, in-ring training and conditioning. So he – it kicks my ass, and I love it. Uh, he focuses a lot on, you know, blow-up drills and, and making sure that, you know, we we are in, in ring shape pretty much uh, before we start getting into more wrestling things, more techniques and stuff. Like, that's uh, the whole conditioning is the big, big aspect of his training. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, and a lot of times when we talk about wrestlers, two, two wrestlers about their training, about sort of how it's multifaceted and how it, it encompasses a lot of, kind of like what you mentioned before about how you were into sort of the athletic stuff, but also like you were in theater and stuff like that. So it's also the acting portion. Do you get that a lot when, when you're uh, when you're training? Uh, it's always, yeah, during training, we're always supposed to, you know, it's, it's like we're putting on a show, even when we're just training. Like it's part of the learning process. It's part of, of the whole Hulk and Kabuto. So, yes. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so, what what would you say? And I was always curious. I really wanted to know to know more about this. What is a I guess a week in the life of a, a of an aspiring pro wrestler, a, a trainee? Uh, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, 
I think everyone's different. For me personally, uh, I train, so Paul has two classes usually, so I train in the mornings. Um, so we'll have training usually Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So I'll usually wake up and uh, I will do my pre-workout regimen <laughs> and eat lots of food. <laughs> then I'll go to training. And then, I mean, I live a normal life besides that, kind of. I usually go straight to work right after training, which is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but, so we uh, have the, rem the remnants of, uh, of your work in the ring. Yeah, uh, I apologize, fellow co-workers. Uh, <laughs> and, I mean, I recently just got a gym membership. I was used to working out at my house and doing P90X, but uh, recently joined a gym. So I will go there usually after work or on my days off. Uh, I'll go I don't know. I'm really bad at gyms. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm that awkward person, like staring at the machine, like, uh, hmm, how do I work this? <laughs> but uh, I don't. I mean, I have a, a degree in nutrition, so I I also focus a lot on my eating habits and trying to eat healthy. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> Nothing um, too exciting. Well, you know, life of a pro wrestler. Um, but. I always, a question we tend to ask on the show is sort of uh, the basis question we ask to everyone is what's sort of the best thing about indie wrestling and the worst thing. I kind of want to ask to you, uh, however, what's the best thing about training and, and, and in, on your path to becoming a wrestler and what in turn is the hardest thing, would you say? Um, best thing? I would just have to uh, – best thing, best thing. Just seeing how far I can push myself, like just – I'm hard. I'm very hard on myself. I doubt and overthink, and and seeing where I was when I first started, and seeing you know I'm only eight months in. I am nowhere near like a professional wrestler. I like to call myself a student that's training to be a wrestler at the professional level. Uh, but I have just seen myself come these great lengths where things I couldn't even think about doing months and months ago. I I I can do. Maybe not good, but I'm doing them. I. I'm pushing myself harder than I've ever pushed in my life because this is something that I really want. I'm really determined. And I've never had such a passion for something where I, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all about that. So I'd say just, just seeing how far I've come in the last couple months and just just thinking about where I might be in a year or two is just blows my mind. I'm just, just I think, yeah. Yeah, I'd go with that. That's the best thing. Definitely. Um <laughs> And and would you is there a sort of a, a harder thing? I mean, in the sense of obviously the actual like physical, you know, toll I guess it takes. I I would, I would think. Um, besides the toll on my body, I can tell you, like I hurt almost every day. But I would say just um, the business itself is really hard. It will push people out. It will it will weed people out on its own. And for me, that's that's been a a tough a tough one for me is just dealing with, you know, not so much the the actual training and stuff, but the stuff behind the scenes, uh, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's whatever. But I'd say that's the hardest for me, at least, just dealing with all that stuff. Awesome. Um, so the, uh, you, you mentioned, obviously, training with Paul, but you've also done training with George De La Isla and, and, and a couple other people. Who, who are some of the people you think have uh, taught you the most, would you say, um, from, your, from your months of training? Oh God, I don't want to name names. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every everybody that I've come in paths with that that has been willing to to share their knowledge with me, I am so grateful for. And that's that's a lot of people. Like uh, when I was training with George, our in ring trainer was was Steve Patton. So you know, mm. he he's taught me a lot. I'm very grateful for him. You know, other classmates in George's class, my friend Zach, uh, George himself. Uh, you know, Paul. Paul is amazing. I don't know. I just at shows, you know, when I get to talk to people and, and they give me tips and they show me things. Like every every person I've ever come in contact with, thank you. <laughs> Y'all have made a world of a difference, and I appreciate any knowledge you are willing to bestow upon me. <laughs> uh, very cool. Um, so you did, however, have your first ever match not too long ago. Uh, yeah. I, it was for uh, ACW. You competed on their February event uh, in a tag team match. Uh, oh. What was it like, sort of, you know, realizing, like, wow, like, this is my first ever time, you know, actually wrestling a pro wrestling match? I almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a major meltdown in the locker room, freaking out. Uh, 
it was just, it, I was just like, oh my god, what? And then uh, after the uh, after the match, I I actually went, but I went and I cried. I was so happy, I cried. <laughs> I am not embarrassed to say that because something that, that I've, a good time. <laughs> something I've dreamed about for 16 years like finally happened. I was just like, oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was I was a mess. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, it, I don't. It's it's crazy to think that was that was in February. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, also like it was a tag team match with uh, you were teaming with uh, Jessica James, who's competed in, now just coming off of a tour in Japan, and and against guys like JoJo Bravo and Angel Blue. Like, how how you know was sort of that experience getting you know thrust into that uh, that type of match. I was honored, like to have Jessica as my as my partner. I was just like, oh my god! I just I thanked them all immensely afterwards. Like I was just just so I don't know. I can't even. I don't have the words. I was just so happy that my first match included you know names like JoJo and Angel Blue and Jessica. It's just it was just crazy, and I was just so happy and like, ugh. Uh, it was just it was an honor to to be able to have them as my as my debut to have their names with me. It was amazing. Very cool, definitely. Um, so, what are your sort of I, I would say obviously you know few months into you know actual wrestling career, uh, what are some of your goals? Would you say going forward now um, now that you're starting to work more shows and 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 go more places? Not suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really just. I just want to train as much as I can and learn as much as I can. And, you know, peop I would love to start getting, I mean, I don't know when this is going to happen. Like I said, I'm still in training. I'm still a student. But if I could get booked back home, that would be amazing. If I could go mm -hmm. home and uh, have my family there to, to see me do this, that's one of my goals. Uh, I mean, I would love, love, love to go to Japan. Maybe one day. <laughs> I mean, always, I, I mean, I'm WWE man. I mean, I don't know why you know you'd be doing this to not try to get there mm -hmm. uh if if i don't know that's those are big dreams but i would love to get a contract someday i mean awesome yeah and and you know that's sort of a topic with indie wrestlers in a sense is you know the, the idea of you know wwe being like you know a future or whatever a viable future but i think I, I think you're right it's good to have that goal of you know wanting to strive for something strive for pretty much the best yeah I mean, I, w I would love to even, like, NXT, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I just would love to be able to travel a lot. That's one of my goals with wrestling, just travel as much as I can. So. And and I want to I also uh, sort of get over um, your, uh, obviously, Delilah Doom. You have a very unique style, I would say, uh, for anyone that uh, gets to uh, check out a professional wrestling match of yours. Uh, how, how would you describe it? My style? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> well, what 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 do you uh, what do you want people to know when when they uh, ch check out a Delilah Doom match? It's a lot of fun, baby. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I like to think I I'm very I'm very awkward and I'm very energetic. So it's a uh, it's an interesting um, aura that that I give off because I am just I am very strange. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very bubbly, so. <laughs> That's always good. A lot, a lot of energy always helps professional wrestling. So. <laughs> I think so. I have fun with it, so I think that's very important. <laughs> awesome. So if, if somebody wants to check you out, uh, do you have any upcoming dates uh, that you want to uh, to promote or put out there, or places you may be wrestling? Uh, I uh, am working a – oh, God, I don't know Texas very well. Please I, – I just <laughs> found out about this. I'm doing it's a, a It's a big state. <laughs> uh, and mineral – Wells? Is that a place in Texas? It sounds like a place. Okay. Uh, I have to look at, I just found out about this like today, so I have to look at the details, but it's May 16th. I don't even know, what's today? I don't even know <laughs> the dates. This is awful, you guys. Uh, I will post it on my Twitter, though, so you can follow me on Twitter at Delilah underscore Doom when the O's are zeros. Uh, but yeah, I'm working Mineral, I think it's Mineral Wells, Texas. I have to get the details because I didn't know anything about it until recently. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, hey, you take what you can, though. That's wrestling, though. Uh, and that's all I know for now. So, I'm, you know, like I said, I am still very new, so my bookings are not anything extraordinary at the moment. Uh, I'm hoping I'll get better so people will want to book me more. So, <laughs> hey, you guys. 
<laughs> but hey, if you want to book Delilah Doom, go uh, go follow her on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, go check her out. Uh, yeah, and and go uh, go support uh, Delilah Doom and any uh, upcoming uh, uh, indie professional wrestlers because they because the young the young boys and girls deserve love too. So yes, please the greenies. <laughs> we're, tr- <laughs> we're trying really hard, you guys. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Delilah. It was a pleasure having you on. Uh, and I believe now, me and Sorg, we're going to talk a little bit of indie wrestling news that's coming out of this weekend. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. All right. Thanks, uh, Delilah Doom. Uh, awesome interview. She's really cool. I like her. She's yeah. But you you don't you know you like you don't ever. It, it's hard to find wrestlers with that good of an attitude going into it it seems a lot of enthusiasm i know so i know nice. like i'm around a lot of trainees at iwc and 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 and, and like you know it's, it's it's good to see that i love i love seeing these guys with all this energy you know versus the ones that have been there 10 years i'm like oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh that's great that's great so yeah go check her out like i said we'll keep an eye on she's also on facebook too so go look up delilah doom over there and like her there as well uh so uh you know keeping with the theme i, I mentioned last week vow uh, Vicious mm-hmm. Outcast Wrestling here locally in, in uh, the, well, I want to say Pittsburgh, but mostly the greater Pittsburgh area. Uh, they've done like a show like in town at the Irish Center, uh, but mostly they're on the outskirts. Like I said, about a half an hour to an hour away, Uniontown, Connellsville, Jeanette. Jeanette's where I got to uh, actually attend this past weekend. Uh, it was a tournament uh, that was basically a, a Queen of the Ring tournament. That was, uh, you'd think like your money in the bank. Because uh, they already okay. have what they call a Vixen's title, which is a cool kind of different name. I like that, actually, um, uh, uh, for a women's title. I, mean. uh, and I, I don't know. You, I, one, I actually hate the Divas title. For yeah. The look well, of it, it <laughs> that they call it the Divas title. I hate I hate the whole concept of it. But, but thankfully, we're getting girls like Paige and AJ Lee in there to more represent that. But I know it's a different oh, thing. Yeah. It's a different branding. It, it, it is what it is, right? Um but uh, uh, for this one, and, and I've seen a little bit, like I said, a little bit of VOW before, and I'm sorry, I'm, I should have brushed up on names before I got into this. Um, but it, they had about 10 girls. Um, they had a, uh, a, a quarterfinal and a semifinal. <laughs> semifinal was, uh, so they, like, you know, since they had 10 of them, uh, so it was a, a one-on-one match and then a three-way match to get, our, to get your finals. Okay. You know, I, and I've seen that before. I think they might have done that. Well, actually, Super Indie did that where it, where it ended in a three-way uh, before. Like, you know, weird stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it, one, it's weird for me to go to a show with a bunch of familiar faces there, um, and I don't <laughs> have to do anything. Yeah. I'm not used to this. Um, I, I was actually, I, it's like, I don't know if I'm just, just because that's, it felt right. I felt, I sat back by the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you that. had to you had to find your place exactly exactly um but uh hold on i'm trying to bring up uh some some stuff from the show here uh it, it was also i was mentioning to you, you guys before the show um it was it's the first like bar show that i've been to um okay the where I mean, you've seen them where like there's the ring. I know, I know you. I've seen pictures from some of the shows you go to down there, there, there in Texas, where uh, there's a ring and there's a stage on the other side of the ring and there's chairs on one side of the ring. Mm. That's it. <laughs> like I don't even think there was 50 chairs set up. Um, and and I heard that their show the night before in Uniontown did about the same thing. I was like, oh yeah, there's like 50 people. And I saw I looked, I saw one picture. I was like, oh, that was pretty much the same setup. Like these, and and, and which kind of throws me because I've been to their shows before, and they were like, you know, a VFW full of like looked like 500 people, you know. Uh, so right. I don't know what angle they're taking with the promotion. It seems like they jump around from venue to venue a lot. So I don't know if that has to do with anything. Um, but generally, like, you know, decent production as far as, like, they have an entrance and they put a TV screen up with, like, a nice shiny logo of the event for this Vixen's Mayhem that they had. Uh, by the way, not so mad about the Mayhem because it's Mayhem because it's the middle of May. Hey, um, that's clever. Yeah, yeah, it took me a minute. To, I didn't get that until, like, the day before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's just I wasn't paying attention or something. Um, but, uh, and like, like I said, I mentioned this earlier tonight uh, on the other show, but... But I know it's a women's show, and I was really happy for that. But you know the highlight of my night and why I went was the feature match of Super Oprah versus G. Raver. No, oh, jeez. Who and, and, and mind you, G. Raver has been doing the Generation Dead thing with Corey. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a, a wild contrasting of styles. And we had, you know, we had the women all night. So you know, there wasn't any like huge bumps through the entire night, you know, with, you know, the smaller women. And then you get Super Oprah, which is a big he, she um that seemed to shake the place <laughs> after when he got going um and, and and like i said just like the the wlc match on uh uh, uh on uh, uh uh you know extreme rules uh, this Sunday, past weekend yeah. if you're watching mainstream wrestling these are the simple joys of professional wrestling like the i don't know if you want to call it the freak freak sideshow thing or or something but like just something the, sort of the i i maybe isn't the right word but like side attraction yeah yeah i mean it just it is just a delight to see something this extraordinary as, as a, a a giant black man dressed up like a woman and completely selling the hell out of the thing um and during the course of it somehow loses his wig and breast implants um that pedro has to pick up um it, it's 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 and just seeing everybody's reaction because you can you, you can almost guarantee about 50 percent of that crowd that's the first time seeing super oprah and has no idea what to expect from this right mm. um especially like I'm, I'm pretty sure wrestling is not even near regular in that part of uh the area and then they get to see this on you know there's like, oh these beautiful women wrestling da, 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 da. and then there's super oprah it's like right what <laughs> so um but no it was a it was a great show uh a, a lot of thailanded girls there um and, and it, it, the first time uh, there's been a, a women's show like this in the area like i said we see a lot in aiw I actually saw some people with aiw shirts so I, I don't know if there's some affiliation i know there's some girls that are typically on those cards yeah i um, believe there was a uh, allison k was there um, allison k is the one with the uh the blonde stripe right she she's the one she wrestled at that Ring of Honor Pittsburgh show uh, the one where yes. she's wearing the Hannibal Lecter mask yes yes uh, okay. she's interesting uh, uh, she's interesting because um, it it was uh, about three matches in before the crowd gave a crap about what's going on right and actually it was getting mm -hmm. into stuff and she was one of the ones that started like taunting the crowd and getting into it another one I wanted uh, something Madison that calls herself the G rated the G rated star. Um, was just like doing moves and posing for pictures, you know, because there's people <laughs> in the front row with their, web, you know, with their, their, their phones taking pictures of the girls and stuff, right? And she just stop and smile at them. And there was another one, um, uh, Von Dutch was her name. Leah was, Von Dutch. Leah yeah. Von Dutch was another one, you know, uh, uh, putting over. She's from Canada and and everything, and, and again posing for the pictures and everything. Like they were the ones that kind of made the night. Um, awesome. when a lot of the girls, I think, didn't know what to do with the lack of crowd or get a reaction or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, like there was, there was one girl there that, uh, I know I was told was, I think trained by Harley Race and it was just flat the entire time. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, I think people underestimate your, you know, the, how, how much the interaction with the crowd sort of plays an effect, mm -hmm. uh, I, especially with indie wrestling. Like, mm -hmm. like in the fact that it is a smaller crowd, like you have to sort of play up to them more. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know, they'll appreciate you for it in a sense, you know, I, I, I think people can tell, you know, you know, when people are just sort of, you know, wrestling and sometimes there's a time to wrestle and there's a time to, you know, jaw with fans or whatever, but like, you know, you sort of have to have an understanding of like when to sort of take it up a bit. And nobody, nobody overdid it either. Like I, 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 I complain a lot about some guys, especially like some of the RWA guys, or yeah, actually no, even lately some of the uh, uh, guys in uh, IWC. It, it doesn't matter. I see this everywhere now. Where especially the heels will just like take a powder and start drawing with the fans, and it's like it's like five or ten minutes before we get to a wrestling match, right? And and, yeah. and that feels like something that we could have easily done here in this situation to try to get some heat and try to get the fans into it and stuff but they didn't they, they did it in the ring they, they you know it was enough of an interaction um but there was still great wrestling in the ring um and it, it was pretty good stuff uh one close call there was a um uh, like the xbox x factor move um uh, mm -hmm. where i think the girl got knocked out and um, it, it sounds like she didn't tuck properly or something uh so yeah, it was kind of a scary moment the first match of the night which was fun which yeah <laughs> it's a good way to start off. which is really funny because i walked in at the end of and actually probably in the middle of it they had a qa beforehand um you could get in early if you had a vip ticket i guess um and and 
they did, and they were cycling through the girls and they had like five in the ring at the time. And somebody asked about injuries. And one of the girls on the panel says, great, now one of us is going to get injured tonight. And first match right out the gate, it happened. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, so it, it's always scary to see, especially on that level, um, you know, with these girls, you know, or with guys, whoever, you know, just, just see that in person is kind of rough. Um, but uh, still a great mix of talent. Um I'm glad uh, you enjoyed it. Actually, I, yeah. I, I was I was curious because this is this, for to my knowledge, is this your first ever like sort of like women's specific show? Oh, is this 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 is my first ever women's specific show. Here's some of the girls here. Uh, somebody had some pictures on VOW site. Uh, Marty Bell, who I'd seen before, of course, in IWC. Mm-hmm. Um, the girl on the left, I, I again don't remember her name, but she's uh, apparently like like part Native American and stuff. Like real good look, I and mean, she was pretty decent in there too. Um, so, uh, go check them out. Uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling is on Facebook. I know they have DVDs. They were filming things. Um, I, I really want to see how this, this, uh, works out. Again, on the technical side, they had a guy at ringside, really good camera. A friend of ours, Bert LeGrand, who does the, uh, ring announcing actually for, uh, RWA was on commentary. Another friend of the show, Chris LaRusso was on color. I think he's, uh, he's one of the champions there, I think. Um, and, and that's somebody else, gentleman, something or other. I didn't catch his name. Um, but the hard cam was a GoPro. So really? I don't know. And I looked at the, I, before I left, I looked over at the screen they had back there and it looked like it was like a fisheye lens. Cause I could see all the seats and the ring was like all the way over here. So I'm really curious to see how that turns out. Um, or if there's something they're doing in post and plus, you know, GoPro, GoPros are great, but the lighting in there was bad. So I, yeah. I don't know what they're doing with that. It's a lockdown hard cam. I hate hot. I hate when I have to do lockdown hard cams, you know, <laughs> I, because you know, you don't, you can't get another guy on it, right? Right. Um, or, or you know, you don't have the personnel to handle all that stuff. So you just like just point out the ring. Uh, the ring's not going to move, right, guys? We're good. We're good. <laughs> I, I, I never know. It's it's so uneventful, and, and it's so you know, you, everybody's used to the WWE style where you at least have a camera on the side. You at least have a moving camera that follows the action. If the action's over here in a corner, at least you can do something. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. Instead of just having this giant open space on your screen that nobody cares about while I'm waiting for my ringside guy to, to roll into position, right? I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going off on it. This is the thing Sorg thinks about even when he's not working on it. It is! Side. It is! It seriously is! Because I these White Oak shows kill me because I have to do a lockdown cam. And uh, <laughs> ah, it is what it is. More people go to it and maybe I'll, they'll be able to afford me. Um, anyways... <laughs> Awesome. There's that. Uh, you got, but I know. So you got a lady show coming up. We do. And this and, is very. And I'm convenient. getting super did, jealous of the lineup I'm seeing on Facebook. I did not plan this whatsoever to have uh, this women centric episode of uh, of the Indie Mayhem show, but let's roll with it. Uh, today we actually got to announce the full lineup for our next Inspire Pro Wrestling event, which is May 25th, which is less than three weeks away. Holy shit. Um, it, it's, we're finally doing month by month shows and now it feels like everything's going by fast and it's amazing, but it's also like super scary. Um, but we have a stellar lineup for this show. Holy I'm really, crap. really excited about this event. Uh, we are main eventing that show with a, uh, defense of the NWA world women's championship. Jeez. Um, which I am super, super excited about the awesome people at the end is a official NWA sanctioned match. Uh, it's going to be really amazing. Barbie Hayden, who is the defending champion. If you haven't seen Barbie Hayden before, check her out because she's, she's got the look that is, you know, sort of what people expect out of a televised female professional wrestler, but she's so much more than that. I think she's really amazing in the ring, uh, taking on Portia Perez, who's making her return to the Texas area after I want to say about a year and a half. Uh, and she, you know, former two time shimmer tag team champion has competed all over the world, uh, and can really stake her claim as being, you know, kind of one of the best female wrestlers out there. So it's going to be really awesome to showcase that match, uh, for our main event, uh, for that event. We also have a, a bunch of female talents coming in. Uh, there's going to be a three-way match between Athena, uh, Veda Scott, and uh, Angelus Lane, which I'm super excited about. I think that'll be really good. Yeah, Veda Scott. Be- I, I know Veda Scott. You, you're the one that's usually bringing up Veda Scott. And there's, there's definitely some interesting stuff she's doing up in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ring of Honor star as well. So definitely we get that that buzz off of it. She, you know, 
I, I think that match is going to be really awesome. And it's going to be in the road uh, to crowning our first women's champion, which will be fun. We also have a three-way ladder match, our first ever ladder match in Inspire Pro. I'm super excited about Ricky Starks, uh, Sammy Guevara, who you know from uh, uh, your time with uh, the IWC Proving Ground show. Who by, also, the, who, by the way, is coming back to IWC. Yeah, saw that. He's going to be wrestling for Super Indy. I'm very yeah. excited about that. Uh, and Barrett Brown, and that is going to be a killer matchup. Those three guys are awesome. Um, really excited about that. We're also uh, doing a uh, a lot of really other cool stuff. Uh, Jojo Bravo taking on Tadasuke. Uh, uh, they, was, they teamed up back in April, and now they're fighting in a battle with honor and humanity. Uh, because you know, for those that don't know, like Jojo definitely inspired by the Japanese style, but specifically uh, Osaka Pro Wrestling, which Tadasuke is originally from. So this is going to be a killer match. I think it's kind of an honor to be the company to put that match out there. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. We've got a lot of amazing talent. Uh, Jake Durbin, who I was really impressed with, he debuted for us in April. He's coming back to take on Matthew Palmer, which should be awesome. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff. Uh, I'm really excited that we're putting on this match. Um, the Great Depression, who, if you don't know, is our resident uh, 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 monster of a man, uh, 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 burlap sack head and, and he's from the 1940s apparently and it's he's crazy taking on sorg are you ready for this mm. honky kong we are doing the great depression versus, versus honky, honky kong. kong which somebody when we well, that with, first time ever when amen early on in the wrestling mayhem show you brought up uh, uh, what was I, our seeds our, our uh, river city wrestling, river city yeah. wrestling and and which one of recently, the which recently the great depression has been uh competing for as of late so okay a bit of a bit of a challenge in a sense um and we're we're getting to host that match and it's pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's going to be amazing. I, 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 I'm really psyched for this card. Um, I think top to bottom, there's really good stuff. Showcases a lot of the really awesome female talent that's across the United States. Um, and even beyond that, obviously, with Portia Perez being from Canada. Yes. Um, and a, a lot of our top stars, a lot of really big matches. A lot of matches I think I have the poten will have the potential to steal the show. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a really fun show. Uh, that uh, May 25th. Uh, which is, like I said, less than three weeks away uh, at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in Austin, Texas for Inspire Pro Wrestling's In Their Blood. Uh, that will be uh, coming up very soon. And you can get your tickets at InspireProWrestling.com. We actually changed a bit of the ticket stuff. Uh, we divided front row and general admission. Front row is $15. General admission is $12. I know a lot of people were asking about, hey, are you going to ever sell front row separately? And, you know, because they – uh, it's cool to see that people willing to pay a bit more to you know make sure they get that front row seat. That's mm -hmm. that's really cool. Has it just been first um, come first serve for you guys? Yeah, uh, just all GA um, mm -hmm. and yeah, basically first come first serve. But uh, yeah, we'll be switching up this time and do front row and GA. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of really cool stuff on that card. Uh, we're uh, we're kicking off with Matthew Palmer against Jake Durden in our tradition of kicking off with a with a high profile matchup. So if you buy a ticket and you're coming to the show, get there early because you do not want to miss any of it. Um, awesome. It's going to be really, really fun. Awesome. Um, because I can never fail that this is probably happening on, on an off weekend. PWX has a show, because they're insane and have two shows a month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a couple companies that actually do that. I don't know how they keep this up. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> but they're having Burke Brawl 18. They're, I guess it's their yearly Battle Royal kind of thing. Um, headlined by a friend of the show, uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show, Jason Gorey. Or Gorey uh, against Jack Pollock uh, in the title match. Uh, some other cool guys on there. Matt Justice, uh, I've known from Prime and IWC. Uh, former, Actually, former signee with... With uh, uh, WWE, of course, uh, Bobby Beverly, uh, other friend of the show, uh, also been on Ring of Honor. Chris LaRusso, I mentioned before, was Super Hentai, and a bunch of other cool guys on there. Um, their show, again, have not been there. I've, I've been able to see a little bit of their video, and if you're not in the area, of course, uh, luckily these guys do do uh, a, a television show, and they are putting it online now. Uh, this PWX, uh, I think it's PWX Express, they're calling it. Uh, so go check that out over at ProWrestlingExpress.com. Something else from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, and, and again, something different. Again, you know, people, like, it feels like studio wrestling because they have a building that they're mm -hmm. able to do up 
and have everything but locked down. I, I think it's super cool that there's companies that sort of putting on at, at that sort of le- upper level of production to where mm-hmm. they have their sort of own you know personal venue i guess in a sense and and you know they're putting stuff out there so exactly exactly and, and it, you know i've kind of complained about uh, well on the show we talked about how there's way too many groups around the pittsburgh area but i started mm-hmm. to look at it this way um every group does something different P- yeah uh, PWX is doing this again. The studio wrestling, they have their own venue kind of thing. IWC, I always call it kind of the indie refic kind of thing, where they're they're attracting the Ring of Honor talent and like best of the indies, basically, right? Um, mm-hmm. Doing you know crazy great things like up in Meadville, they did with the Night of the Superstars with AJ Styles. RWA is, I think, really kind of uh, has been and will be growing into its own uh, and kind of defining what their voice is. Um, uh, those guys have been around six years, and now I think they're kind of I think you're going to see them turn the corner, and you're seeing this with the salute to truth that just happened, and, and they got to have some other stuff uh, coming down the line that's going to grow off of that. You, you, that that's a kickstart to something, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know whether they can fill a six thousand seat arena or not. They they but they doubled the people that came in the door. That's something, you know, with no names, no names, guys. <laughs> uh, again, PWX doing their thing. IWC K- KSWA has a crazy rabid. Uh, a group. I know a bunch of people say, "Yeah, oh, oh, do you work with KSWA?" I'm like, "No, I, I never know when they have a show on." Like they're like the anti everything new. It seems they have no social media. They have a, a website that looks like it was built a while ago, um, and and therefore I always miss when there's a show coming up until it's too late, right? Um, and they got Lord Zoltan. They got you know very very old school you know kind of kind of mentality there. Uh, VOW is doing, you know, they've been kind of ragged on for being uh, ripping off AIW. Good, we need an AIW down here. Let them be the AIW yeah. of Pittsburgh. AIW does pretty well. Hey, hey guys, they're having Tim Dots come to the next show. They're having Shikara guys come to the show with Batiri and a Syrian Portal. Please. Bring it, guys! AIW's Please. booking Buff Bagwell this month. They gotta be doing something right. I well, I don't know if that's doing something right, but uh, it's something. I mean, but, he's just, but Sark, he's the stuff. He's <laughs> he is the stuff. Okay, I can't deny that. I can't argue with the Buff the Buff the Buff Bagwell ism there. So. Um, so, I mean, I, I think, I think anybody, a uh, wrestling fan should just be like, wow, I got a lot of choice, you know, and yeah. go support it's something. Gonna, my, God, my God, my God, like, show me a calendar where you have a weekend where wrestling isn't happening within an hour and a half from Pittsburgh. I never have any of those weekends, Sorg. <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> Legitimately, there's never a weekend where, like, there's not wrestling, like, some point during the weekend, like, at least an hour away. Exactly. Like, like, like it, it, if there's not a weekend I'm working a show, chances are, and unfortunately this isn't the case because usually I'm like, oh god, I gotta get away from wrestling. Oh my god, <laughs> I had way too many shows this month. Or you know, or, but this weekend I was just like, no, I want to go check this out. This is something I definitely want to go. I want to support these guys um, because I think they're doing something cool and something different. And 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 you know, let's let's see, you know, let's see what what happens with the women's show. And I was really I was really pleased with it. Um, and I hope they do it again. You know, I really do. Uh, so, and God, Super Opera. It all comes down to Super Opera. <laughs> <laughs> Any other shows coming up that you're aware of? Or anywhere anywhere else that anybody wants to talk about? Uh, there or- are some really big shows coming up this weekend. Uh, the uh, Both on the uh, 10th, which is Saturday. That's Saturday, right? I believe it's Saturday. I don't know dates. Yes, um, it's the 10th. Stay tuned, uh, Trachi Plays, yes. If you're in Canada, uh, Ring of Honor... Is starting their uh, is gonna they're going to be holding their Global Wars event, which is their start of the shows that they are doing with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm. Um, so those are going to be really cool that you should check out. Um, the main event uh, that that's listed right now, at least for this show and, and for this event in Toronto, there's a uh, couple matches that are uh, brought could, brought to you by New Japan and a couple matches brought to you by Ring of Honor. Uh, the New Japan show is main evented by Hiroshi Tanahashi and Jushin Liger. Take on Shinsuke Nakamura and Jado. Um, also, giant developments out of New Japan. Uh, Sorg, I don't know if you saw this. Uh, the new uh, IWGP Heavyweight Champion, AJ Styles. AJ Styles? Who beat uh, Kazuchika Okada, the Rainmaker, um, uh, recently at a, uh, a, a New Japan pay-per-view. 
I'm just going to go ahead and say we've given him the Mayhem Pump because I did actually shoot some stuff uh, with AJ Style for a future release with Sorgatron. Can we call it the Sorgatron Media Bump? Sorgatron Maybe. Media Bump, can we, can we do that? I think so. Uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, I mean, I know. I mean, we also I mean, we didn't even mention this. Our our new friend of the show that we had on the show last week, Jimmy Nuts. Yeah, made on, on WWE. Hey, hey Jimmy Nuts. Hey, Jimmy Nuts, cheeseburger guy during uh, Adam Rose entrance on Raw last night. I recognize those glasses anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm like, awesome. who stole Jimmy Nuts' gimmick at WWE? He's gonna be pissed. Yeah, uh, but no, that's and. We, I want to, you know what? I want to do a segment every week whenever there's a indie guy on Raw, and just sort of spotlighting them. That wouldn't that be a cool segment? Because everyone sort of <laughs> jokes at me about how how I recognize all these indie. That's guys. the best part. What, what you know? What are the one of the? If you go to a lot of indies and you're going to certain indies where where some of the people are going up like that, right? And, mm-hmm. Or when Raw comes to your town and you get to play the "Hey, I know that security guard" game, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's it's one a fun of the, game. It's, it's really one of fun it game. is one of the simple pleasures of being a fan and watching indie wrestling is is that you know you know on top of the oh hey that guy in NXT I remember what he wasn't. Devin Devinson, you know, um, and now he's a pirate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happens. Um, but yeah, uh, AJ Styles uh, bringing the IWGP Heavyweight Title to the Bullet Club, and now uh, he basically is assuming all of Okada's uh, uh, defenses uh, for the Ring of Honor show. So I believe on the seventeenth nice. next weekend he'll be facing Michael Elgin. So ah. Uh. Jeez, I need to get I need to get an eye on some of these shows. Uh, you know, I I wanted to mention because you know we've been talking about the stream. They, they, these shows will be on pay per view, by the way. What, the, the, um, wait, are these the pay per view pay per view ones or the UStream ones? They are they are doing them through UStream, which okay. is much more. Their UStream is what New Japan uses for their iPay. Okay, okay, and they are so much more reliable. Really? Well, it's so a it's I would a better people to buy these. It's a better platform, and I know we well we stream this on Justin TV, and then we have uh, used UStream in the past. Now, what we do, and you get stupid ads every once in a while, and I apologize for that because we can't afford what they need for us no. to do this and we don't get the audience on the stream itself all of it's usually a download afterwards uh, um to to afford that <laughs> hopefully down yeah. the line we can um but but i mean Ustream is something that's been around for a while they know the thing to do you know they know how to do this and versus what were they using before wwn or something like that uh, no they were using go fight live I go fight live go go fight live i yeah, yeah they're they're not respecting what they're doing, but they're not they're not the solid platform that Ustream do. Go Fight Live is a great platform for indies to get their foot in the door of this eye pay per view thing. And they're mostly I think they're still I haven't looked at their site for a while, but they've been mostly, doing a couple things. Um, I, I don't know the companies, but the, I know they're still doing indie eye pay per views. Okay, um, them and WWN Live. So. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, th- these are not like full built from the ground up platforms, tried and true platforms like a Ustream or a Justin TV is. Um, these, I mean, these guys have yes, they have something. Yes, they have a, a back end, but I don't think it, it, I, I think at least on the we call this the last mile a lot. Uh, uh, you know that first connection they have to get to these guys because I mean the requirements are not very high end for you to do GFL. And I yeah. imagine WWN is probably similar uh, versus Ustream will need to do. You need to do X, Y, and Z for this to work. And, and for somebody that's a company that's owned by Sinclair Broadcasting needs to step up their freaking game. Um, awesome. And I'm hoping Ustream is the thing. And I hope they bought the, the holy shit package with Ustream to make sure everything works, including I'm sure at a certain point Ustream sends a guy to make sure you didn't fuck it up. You know, probably yeah. it's not a, it's not dual si- satellite trucks like WWE runs, but it's at least a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so that's the show this weekend. There's also, like I mentioned, another show, uh, Ring of Honor New Japan show next weekend. So there's going to be more stuff coming. Uh, there's going to be a fun weekend, and I know the New Japan guys are wrestling a lot of other places too. I believe uh border city wrestling out of canada is doing some uh, stuff with them too so uh, oh you keep know an what i wonder loop. actually i just saw let me okay go ahead go ahead i'll fill fill i need to look something up okay um uh another event 
or a series of events I can talk about that's coming up this weekend. Also on the 10th, if you're around the New Jersey area, um, CZW and WSU are doing their double header once again. A um, lot of interesting stuff uh, came out recently uh, about WSU, or, or not, I shouldn't say about WSU, but uh, some stuff that transpired. Uh, Jessica Havoc, who has been the WSU champion for about two, a little over two years now, mm-hmm. uh, stripped of the championship and uh, from the, what the phrase was used was uh, banned for life. Uh, don't know exactly what's happening there. Uh, obviously, stuff is going to eventually come out, I assume, about what's been happening. But uh, for what we know now, she's been stripped of the championship. Uh, they did announce that the uh, new champion would be crowned in a rematch from their last show. Uh, the match of the night and could quite possibly be match of the year for uh, their show of uh, Athena taking on Lufisto. Uh, This time it will be a two out of three falls match. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. I watched their last match they had for uh, the last WSU show. It is spectacular. Check it out. It's going to be really, really awesome. So, so, okay. So I caught wind of this border city wrestling actually earlier, like like earlier in the night here, uh, Joe Dombrowski friend of the show is actually going to be involved with it. Uh, I got a poster up here. Uh, so East meets West this Friday, May 9th, uh, up there in Windsor, Ontario, uh, (laughs) featuring Booker T of all people. And again, a bunch of Japanese guys. I don't know. I'm sure you know some of them. I <laughs> Alex, uh, a lot of the world knows them. <laughs> Alex Shelley, yeah. PD Williams, friend of the show, Cody Diener. We talked to him on Wrestling Mayhem Show a while back. Go look that up. Bolin, who wrestles in IWC here. What? <laughs> I believe Bolin's taking Bo- Bolin's in a tag team match with uh, Takaki Watanabe, who I've worked with for, with Inspire Pro. Oh my! And, Hir- and Hiroshi Tanahashi. That's going to be crazy. I believe uh, one That'll of the matches something. is uh, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura against Chris Sabin. That's going to be fucking insane. Um, wow. That's going to be. A, this, uh, I sorry. I'm going to. My goal now is I'm going to get. I'm going to get you into New Japan. <laughs> oh, is that what's happening now? <laughs> I'm going to get you. You need to see this stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. I mean, I did see. I did see there was a Japanese know, barbed wire midget wrestling match. That was on That's the board earlier. Different. That's very different than New Japan. I mean, I do have some Strangle Mania. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> no. I, I gotta get, I gotta get you accustomed There's with the rain. There's a man dressed and... as a panda. I don't understand why. I needed okay, to pay. Um, uh, you, because you know Okada when he was in TNA, right? He was Samoa Joe's bodyguard that wore a mask that one time, like a black mask, and he got beat up by the Pope. He wrestled on Explosion a bunch. Why would I know who wrestles on Explosion? I I know. Exactly. Kind of my point exactly. Well, in New Japan, he's king shit. (laughs) Is he He the John Cena of New Japan? He is the rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. He makes money fall down from the ceiling. He's fucking adorned in robes and gold, and he fucking clotheslines the shit out of people, and it's goddamn amazing. Send me one match. Send me one I match. Will, to, send I will me send you one, one match. match. A lot of them, to, a to lot watch of them are very long. And, a lot oh, of them are no. very long. I don't know if I could do that. I'll, I'll, I'll try to send you a short one. Because, I mean, it's really weird when there's, like, you know, screaming Japanese and, and one time with the women and, and, and then my wife wakes up in the middle of the night and says, what in the world are you watching? <laughs> As these sounds yeah, yeah. emanate from the editing room. But, no, I'm going to get you in New Japan. Sorry. I'm, I'm All right. Bring it, man. Bring it. It's there needs to be... Mission. I really wish, like, you know, we have WWE and all these, and TNA have worldwide exposure and everything. I really wish somebody somewhere, like, would adapt this Japan stuff. I guess we have YouTube. I, right I, now. I, 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 don't, I doubt we will see it beyond independent. I independent know, but level. it's just, like, weird. Like, remember, what was that one channel? Colors TV or something that carried, like, some kind of weird wrestling, right? Like Lucha Libre and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I watched Lucha Libre on Univision. Like, like you know, if you get like it on U- years like, ago. the closest you'll get to international wrestling on, like, a national level is watching AAA on Univision. Like, that's the closest I think even, you'll get to Even it. if it's just, like, just, you know, they throw an American announcer on there and, and here you go. You know, something, something. It, I, I and it's hard to, to explain this to people, but I, I, it is very true. You don't have to necessarily understand the commentators to get the story. You know, actually, a friend of the show in the mainstream media works here locally at the news station, uh, Matt Carnes. He was talking about how he does not mind the Japanese. Uh, he's been watching some of that stuff. He, he doesn't mind the Japanese. You get a lot. They do a good job of 
delivering the emotion. Yeah. Through their voice. I'm obviously like you mentioned screaming Japanese people, but you know, yes. they, 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 and, yeah, I know and I know yeah, exactly Kelly Cow. Uh, 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 ICP will ICD ICP do commentary for New Japan. This is such a wonderful job on Stranglemania. Have you ever watched Stranglemania? I have not. I have heard a lot about Stranglemania. I am going to have to hook you up with I my I feel DVD. like I've seen some clips of Stranglemania. I, I, there was like a women's barbed wire exploding death match or something. I re- think they were commentating over it. Um, <laughs> it's not my favorite. I'll just say that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's something for everybody. You had to have been there. It was the day and the age, you know. It's like you had to have been a hippie when hippies were cool. Yeah. You had to have been a juggalo when juggalos were cool. I wasn't res- watching wrestling during the Attitude Era. I know. Yeah, so, yeah. So when it happens, you know. But yeah, uh, CCW and WSU. If you're in New Jersey, go check them out this Saturday, May 10th. I believe they're also doing eye pay per views um, on through RF Video. So okay. uh, go check them out there and go support them. So. Awesome. Those are those are the indie events I know about coming up this weekend. Have we found all the indie wrestling that is, there is to find? I think so. There's I, actually probably not. There's shit. <laughs> <in> the <laughs> There's yeah, nothing that, else that going on. A response of me to make. Um, as we say every week, um, unless you're from maybe like Wisconsin or something, but there's probably wrestling in Wisconsin, or or you know whatever, like. There's got to be some indie wrestling. There's something here. in Wyoming. Because somebody told me, it's like, I'm moving to Wyoming from Pittsburgh. And I'm like, I almost want to respond, why? Yeah. Why? Why would you do that? But no. Um, go. There's indie wrestling somewhere near you. Go to a show. Even if you don't know anyone on the show, even if this is your first time ever going to an independent wrestling show, go to the show. Because you will have an amazing time. It's an experience. You have a time. I mean, it may not be the best wrestling you ever see sometimes, but no, just seeing a person. No, absolutely not. And, and, but, and, but it's it's just to be in that environment. It's something so different than, it is. than anything else it you experience. Is. So Definitely. And it helps the guys. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, all right. I think we had a great talk. Thanks again to Delilah Doom. Go check her out on Twitter, Delata underscore Doom. And she's also on the Facebooks. Uh, and uh, next week, uh, we're scheduled, uh, I'm going to confirm it, but we are scheduled to have one Justin Labar on the show. Uh, so that will be interesting. He's been on the Indies. Actually, he had a, a promoter of IWC on his radio show on Trib Live earlier today. And he's, of course, made some waves over in uh, Prime Wrestling, IWC lately. Uh, he's been around. He's been around on the Indies uh, in the managerial role. Uh, so it'll be interesting to, to have a conversation with him next week. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, you can check us out. We're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all kinds of stuff in video and audio formats. Uh, you can also drop us a line to our email address at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the voice line at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, and of course, you can join us here live about 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Time or Central Time, 10 p.m. Um, at live.sorgatronmedia.com or again, we got a link over there at wrestlingmayhemshow.com as well. Thanks, Eamon. He's at Eamon too, please. I'm at Sorgatron and please, please, please go support some indie wrestling, guys. Never said I was a gangster or thug when I'm an animal. Oh, Six, six, six.